Good afternoon. It's uh, Thursday afternoon. It's uh, August the 13th and um, hope you're doing well. This is our Thursday evening message from the Heritage Baptist Church YouTube page and um, kind of introducing a series that will begin in earnest next week. It's on the family and um, just kind of go lay a little bit of groundwork tonight and uh, God's Word has a lot to say about the family and um, about your family, about your kind of family, it, in the sense that um, I know everybody seems to have uh, some different look today. And, uh, you know, God's Word has something to say about uh, your situation. So um, we're going to start in Genesis chapter 2 in just a moment. Uh, Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to pray here just uh, in a moment and hope you're praying for me. And if you ever have a prayer need, please share it with us. Uh, you could send it uh, to me. You could send it uh, by email. Uh, you could send it to uh, JDJ Gilroy, G I L R O Y, at gmail.com. You could send it there to me. Uh, you could also leave it in the comment section of these messages, and uh, we'll see that. Uh, or you can share it with one of our members or on our Facebook page. So those are different ways to contact us. And uh, again, uh, we meet in the uh, parking lot of uh, 2010 Doctors Park Drive. That's on kind of the north side of uh, National uh, Road. It's uh, right off the corner of Central and, and uh, Highway 31 or National Road. And uh, it's a great location. Uh, you'll see us when you're going up Central. Uh, we're right next to Grace Lutheran Church and uh, that Doctors Park area there uh, behind what used to be the Hubler Honda uh, place that's moved now. Um, but we'll meet uh, this Sunday at 9.30 and then also at 5.30. Uh, we have a guest speaker uh, this week, uh, Sunday morning at 9.30. Uh, Pastor Travis Collins from uh, California, Lompoc, California, will be speaking in our morning service. Then, uh, Sunday afternoon at uh, 5.30, uh, asking everybody to uh, slow down just a little bit, bring your favorite snack, and uh, let's fellowship a little bit in the parking lot after the service at 5.30. And so please pray for a friend of ours, uh, Pastor Paul Lamato. Uh, has had some surgery this week. He's been uh, having quite a bit of trouble and um, uh, kidney stones and uh, just, uh, just really having a, a real time, just a very difficult situation. Please pray for him. Uh, pray for uh, some of our folks as they recover from different procedures. And then uh, pray for our church situation, uh, that God would help us to move forward uh, on this building. Uh, also praying that we'd reach our city. We had the best drive-in crowd that we've had since we've uh, started back uh, this last Sunday. And I don't know how to explain that. Uh, lots of our ministry type things have been hindered and uh, so God gives the increase, and we're thankful for whoever uh, comes, and we want to be a blessing to each of you. So let's pray, then we'll get into the Word of God, Genesis chapter 2. Father, we do pray that you would help each of us, Lord, to live for you, and Lord, help us to die to self, Lord. Help us to uh, be people, Lord, that uh, have only uh, one agenda, and that's yours. Help us to live and to breathe, Lord. Uh, the things of God. Help us to work to, to build your kingdom. And Lord, I pray that uh, you would uh, speak to each of our hearts tonight about our families. And Lord, there's no doubt every one of us has such different situations. And uh, Lord, uh, use your word to, to help us and to heal us. There's so many homes, Lord, that need strengthening. And uh, do that beginning tonight, Lord, for, for me, our, our family, Lord. And we, we don't have a perfect home. Uh, but we have one, Lord, hopefully that's devoted to you. Uh, be with our friends. Uh, be with the Lamados, Paul and Paula. And be with Pastor Paul, Lord, as he uh, recovers from uh, the surgery this week. Strengthen and help him. And we'll thank you for that. Be with my friend, uh, Brother Collins, and his family as they travel uh, back east. Give him a great home, uh, stay at home with his parents. Uh, help him to be a blessing to our church Sunday. And Lord, we'll thank you for all that you do. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> you get there to Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to begin in verse number 
22, and uh, I'm sorry, verse number 21, and Adam has already been given a job by God to name and to categorize the animals, and he finds no um, person, no, no one that would be a help that is meet or suitable for him. And then it says in verse number 21, it says, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of the, his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she is taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. And so this is a foundational uh, passage of Scripture dealing with the home and the beginning of, of the home. And um, my, my, our, our situation, uh, my wife and I, uh, we, uh, we had two boys, still have two boys and two sons, and we've raised those boys. Uh, they've uh, gone off, uh, uh, left home, uh, married uh, two wonderful uh, uh, ladies, and um, they both have uh, children. And so uh, we have five uh, beautiful grandchildren. I'll show you a picture. And in fact, it's over my shoulder here. And uh, you can see some of my grandkids. And uh, God's blessed us. And so my wife and I are empty nesters. And uh, we're, we're trying to enjoy uh, every season of our life. And it's different uh, when the kids are gone. Um, not better, not worse, but different. And God can give us an enjoyment, we believe, in any season of our life. Some of you are not there. We have a church that has lots of young people, young, a lot of young families, a lot of young children in our church. And so uh, God has uh, something for you also in his word, those that are just getting started out, so to speak. Um, God has something for those that are uh, single parents, those that are divorced, those that have been remarried, those that have stepchildren or step parents. You know, God has a very unique uh, book, the Bible, 66 books, all fitting into one book and uh, connecting in every way. Every book of the Bible has something for us, but every book of the Bible has something to tell us about God, about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if we were missing one book of the Bible, we'd be missing some piece of that puzzle. And so God has something to say to us about our homes. I got a little project. I, I was going through, and this is not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imagination, but I started to write down some of the key families in the Bible. So kind of bear with me just for a moment. We're going to speak about these, and I'm going to give you these foundational things for our study that we're, we're going to come to every time knowing these things, and then we're going to deal with some issues over the next few weeks. Uh, the first family, obviously, is Adam and Eve. Uh, God placed Adam in the garden. He formed him from the dust of the ground. He made Eve of the rib taken from Adam as Adam slept in perfect peace, confidence that God was going to do the best for him. They had two sons at the get-go. Had a boy named Cain, had one named Abel. Those boys were growing up. They both offered a sacrifice and the one brother got jealous of the other, got angry with the other. And when they were alone, uh, Cain rose up and he killed Abel. Now, you imagine the first funeral uh, of a living person was Adam and Eve burying one of their sons. And really, in essence, they lost both those boys because Cain left. And uh, we know that, uh, obviously, they had other children, Seth being one that uh, is mentioned. And, and uh, he is the one that the line uh, continues through. Another family in the Bible, and especially in Genesis, is Noah and his family, Noah and his wife. He has three sons, and he also has three daughters-in-law. Those eight people were saved uh, from the flood by the ark, and so there's a family there. It's a very important family in the Bible. And then begins a very interesting thing that happens in the book of Genesis. Genesis is a book about particularly one family uh, that, is, that gives us a generational look at the family of Abraham, or Abram as it begins, Sarai and Abram. And he's told to leave the Ur of the Chaldees, and he takes with him one of his family members. He takes with him his nephew, 
Lot. And so Lot leaves with them. Abram is uh, promised a son and a seed that uh, is going to be as the stars of heaven. And uh, through the coaxing of Sarai, uh, he has a son, Ishmael, through the concubine, Hagar. And that's not God's plan by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, he eventually has a son by the name of Isaac through Sarai. It's uh, the promise of a son in their late eight, their late years. Uh, so not only do we have Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Ishmael, Hagar, there's also this, you have Lot has a family. Got, Lot has a wife, uh, he has daughters, he has sons-in-law, and so there's that family that live in Sodom. Uh, Isaac grows up. Isaac has uh, a wife. Her name's Rebecca, and they have two sons. Isaac and Rebecca have two sons. One is named Ishmael, or I'm sorry, Esau, and the other one is Jacob. And Esau marries a woman, Mahaloth is her name. She's uh, from the Philistine uh, tribe, and Jacob marries uh, from Laban's family marries Leah and Rachel. That, that's a strange thing we think today. And uh, you say, if somebody would come to me and ask advice, sometimes people do about their home, and I'd say, what's the problem? You may would say, it's complicated, it's complex. And I'd, I'd say to you, it's no more complicated and complex than, than Jacob's family was. He had two wives, two concubines, he had 12 sons and a daughter, so 13 altogether there. And by every combination, it was a strange, it's a strange situation, presented all kinds of relationship problems inside of that family. One of Jacob's sons is a man by the name of Joseph that was sold into slavery. He marries a woman. Um, uh, they have two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And those, that, that really covers much of the book of Genesis. God's telling of the generational things that happen to this one family, Abraham all the way down to Jacob's 12 sons that become the tribe of Israel. And there's lots of family issues, uh, jealousy, pettiness, uh, anger, uh, revenge, forgiveness, uh, grace and mercy. So lots of things are dealt with in that book. Exodus takes up, there's more family things that are talked about. Uh, Moses' family, his mother and his father that exercised faith in hiding him. And uh, Moses has two siblings that are very key uh, in his life and in the life of Israel, uh, Aaron and Miriam. And his father-in-law, real, uh, his wife, Zipporah, his son, Gershom. And so those, that, that makes a family in the book of Exodus. And there's other families, obviously, involved in that those situations. But I'm just talking about the key ones. Then there's you get to the book of um, Joshua and you go to Jericho, there's a family there. And this is a most unusual family. Here is uh, Rahab and she's a harlot and she has a family. She has a father and mother. She has brethren, it says. And by her faith, she, she saves her whole family. Uh, you have also a family that is uh, uh, bad things happen to a man by the name of Achan. And it talks about his sin there, about his sons and his daughters that are that are killed with him because of the punishment of God. We also see in Judges the man named Gideon, Gideon and his father. And so uh, he has 70, he has many wives. It says he has 70 sons. Uh, also in the book of Judges, there's a family there, man and woman, Mayo, Mayo, Maynona, Maynona. Uh, has a son by the name of Samson. He and his wife have a son. And he has a wife, and he leaves her. And uh, then he has Delilah that enters into the picture. And so those are families, key families of the Bible. I'm kind of building towards something here. Then you got the book of Ruth. There's a family portrayed there, a family that leaves where they should have stayed. You have uh, Naomi and Elimelech, their sons, the two boys, and then their two wives, uh, Ruth and Orpah. And uh, they, all the men die in, in the family of Naomi. And Ruth goes back with Naomi back to Bethlehem and she eventually shall marry Boaz. And Boaz is the father of Obed. And Obed's the father of Jesse. And Jesse is the father of David. And so on and on we find families in the Bible. If you go to the books of First and Second Samuel, 
We have Samuel, his, his family, that uh, his mother uh, prayed uh, Hannah to have a child. And, and so we see that family dynamic played out. We also see uh, the family uh, in uh, uh, Saul is, becomes the first king. And Saul is the father-in-law of David. And David is the father of Solomon and just the father of Absalom. And so families seem to be a key issue in the Old Testament. What about the New? In the New Testament, you have uh, Elizabeth and Zacharias. Uh, they, uh, ha they are the parents of John the Baptist. Uh, Elizabeth is a cousin to Mary. Mary and Joseph uh, raised the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and you have there a, a step-parent. Joseph was not his father, but he was a stepfather. And Jesus Christ was his stepson. And, but he raises him as his own. I think there's probably some lessons to be learned there. We also have the disciples that uh, are part of the, the apostles. We have James and John that are the sons of Zebedee. And we see his mother and father portrayed in the scriptures. We also see two brothers, uh, Andrew and Simon Peter. We see uh, a brother and sister, Barnabas and his sister and his nephew, John Mark. And we see also... Uh, a husband and wife that are instrumental in uh, discipling a man by the name of Paulus. And their name is Aquila and Priscilla and godly, godly family. And then you have also this relationship. You have the Father, God the Father, and God the Son. I'm telling you, the, the Bible is a book of many things. It's a book of salvation. It's the, uh, the Bible is the story of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it is also this. It's, it is a book that portrays families in all the reality that they live in, in every kind of situation. And it gives us this, uh, the good and bad of their life. It gives us answers. It gives us examples of how people mess up and also exa great examples of how a family ought to work and how a family ought to function. I'm going to give you four things really quick here, foundational things that we're going to build our study on, on the family. The first thing is this, the family is God's design. In, in Genesis chapter 2, you see God made a man, God made a woman, and God brought them together for all the rest of their life. And so uh, that was God's design. And so we're coming at this. We're coming at families. We're coming at marriage. We're coming at raising children. We're coming at growing old together from this foundational truth that family, a family, is by God's design. And we're going to use God's design because that is the best way. He is, he is the creator of the home, and he knows what is best. The second thing is this, God loves my family. God loves your family. It says in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world. That's a great thing when you think about that God loves the world, but God, let's bring it closer down to this. God loves your family. Matter of fact, this may be very difficult for you to understand and get, but God loves your family more than you love your family. He knows all the good, good things and bad things about your family, and he loves each member of your family. He loves your family collectively. And so God is working not against you, but God is working for you. And so if God loves your family, we ought to listen to God and what he has to say. The third thing is this. God has answers for my family, and they are found in the Word of God. Now, I want you to think about that. God has answers. He loves me. He designed the family, and he has answers for my family, and they are found in the Word of God. And so if your family's struggling, if your family's broken, if your home is having a difficult time, maybe your, maybe your home is cooking along greatly, but you need to strengthen it even more. Every family can come up a level. Every family can be strengthened even more. And we need to strengthen our families more and more because of the day that we live in. Because we don't know what we're going to face. We don't know what's going to come around the pike. And we may cook along doing pretty good right now, but there may be a bumpy road coming. There may be situations that you need to handle. Maybe where you maybe have money now, but you may not have money a month from now. And it may put a strain on your home. And on your marriage, you need to continue to build. And so where are those answers found? They're found in the Bible. They're found in God's Word. You know, many people, before they make a purchase, they make a great study of all the products. They find all the prices, read all the reviews. They read all the instructions. They try to find out somebody else that's used it. 
all those things. They put a lot of study into the product that they're going to buy, but they do very little study. They do very little work. They do very little to educate themselves about their own home and how that works. Let's decide this, that I'm going to find answers. I'm going to find it in the Bible. I'm going to find answers from God. And then this fourth thing, I help my family the most and the best when I am obedient to God's word. Now, all of us have different roles, and that will be one of the things that we deal with, the role that you play in your family. But the best thing I do for my family is this. When I'm obedient to the word of God, I help my family the most. God's not going to bless your family. God's not going to help your family the way you think it ought to be helped unless you're obedient to the word of God. And when you're obedient to God's word, you're obedient to the principles of God's word, that's going to help your family the most. So let me encourage you, stay faithful, stay right, stay in this study. I encourage you to get a notebook. We'll try to help you with this every week. There are going to be some practical things, some instructional things. There are going to be some things that are going to be principles that we're going to lay down every week about how to help our family. And I'm not sure how long we're going to spend here with this, but I think it's going to be a help to you. I know it's going to be a help to me. And uh, pray for one another. Pray for the families that you know. And uh, everybody needs prayer. Everybody needs help. And over the next few weeks, I encourage you, get out the Word of God. Spend some time. Study this foundational passage in Genesis chapter 2, uh, starting in verse number 21. And then spend some time in Proverbs. I encourage you to spend some time in, in Ephesians chapter 4. Read those things. Those are going to be places that we're going to spend some time at. Well, God bless you. Hope to see you Sunday and uh, bring somebody with you and uh, may the Lord help you and keep you. Amen. God bless you.